So now I'm going to I'm going to kind of bring you up to date of where we where we've been and where we're going uh, with with Feshke. So how did we get here? Well, you know we farmed a lot of land east of the Mississippi River, really that really didn't need to be farmed. I mean, it needed to be farmed for those people then. They had to raise crops. They had to make a living there. But as far as the land itself, it was highly erodible land, especially in this area. Uh, and so what you had then was, a, was an overuse situation. And then when we had so, much, so many problems, the, the dust bowl in the west and all kind of water erosion, to give you an example in my state of Georgia, if you know the state of Georgia, about halfway in the state, the town of Macon is there. In 1918, there were eight and a half million acres of cotton north of Macon. Eight and a half million acres. So when it rained, the rivers ran red, you know, and it eroded a lot of land, and I'm certain it was true all through, you know, the Appalachian Mountains. And so what, what the Soil Conservation Service did was cover this land. If I go back into where I lived in Oklahoma for a while, I mean, the Dust Bowl was horrible. But you go out there now, they revegetated a lot of things. So they revegetated with trees and, and, and grass. And, uh, but, and uh, the SCS did a great job doing this, and now it's called NRCS. But they restored a lot of land, and that was their mission. The revegetation, and we'll see in a minute, coincided with the release and promotion of a grass called Kentucky 31 Tall Festival. And remember now, I have a tendency myself to condemn Kentucky 31. The rest of this talk, I'm going to really be talking it down, but it, it did what it was supposed to do. It covered the land and it prevented gullies. And, and it did a wonderful job. It was only when Farmer said, well, I got my land stabilized now. And, uh, what do I do with a bunch of grass? <laughs> well, what you do is, you know, well, I just want to just, me, me, just mention to you that the, the history of this, this is actually where it was collected in at Manatee County, Kentucky. Pretty sloping land there. But he apparently had established, uh, this guy Suter had established some grass from Europe, you know, probably just put it out there, been there a long time. And this uh, guy from the University of Kentucky called Ian Fergus uh, went and collected a bunch of plants, and it was so persistent, they released it as Kentucky 31. He actually collect, that's when he collected in 1931, and I think it was actually released about 37, maybe in the, in the early, you know, around World War II. And so that coincided with this mandate from the SCS. We got this grass, we got this uh, mandate, we're going to start covering land, and this thing will do it. And it was easy to do. Farmers could sell farm, could sell seed to each other. They could harvest the seed, sell it to each other, and just boom, just explode. And so what happened then, when we reached the peak of fescue, by 1973 then, from about World War II to 73, we have 40 million acres of mainly Kentucky 31 tall fescue. And you can see the dark areas where it's just almost wall to wall, the other areas, and then you got spots, you know, as you go west, it uh, gets a little dry out there, except out in the, uh, you know, on, on the Pacific side of, of Oregon and Washington. And so what you have then is that you had, you had 40 million acres, so it covered a lot of land, it covered a lot of sloping land, prevented erosion. 